What are the advantages of psychology the way that you see them? First of all, I'd like to say that Bala Sulam, that is the greatest Kabbalist that we have since the times of the Ari and to this day, he lived in the beginning of the 20th century. He truly praised psychology. He called it materialistic psychology, meaning everything that comes from healthy research, meaning that a judge has only what his eyes see. If we get different results from it, then we can rely on that and continue with it. But it's not that we add different theories to it, assumptions that are unrelated to research. And therefore we respect psychology because we study man and we try to build a picture of man's behavior according to the, let's call it, inputs and outputs, where man is in the middle. What do you mean? Whatever influences him, that's the input, and the way a person responds, that's the output. And man himself, he's a black box, we don't know who he is. And so, after many such actions and attempts, we can then talk about man's behavior, about different types of people, about what we can usually get as a result of the different influences on man and so on. Meaning this is psychology. What's good about materialistic psychology is that it says we don't know what man is. What we do know is what are his responses to the different influences that we exert upon him? Of course, this doesn't give us the understanding of who man is, what goes on inside of him, inside his mind, his psyche, where are all these things all together. Today, with our modern research of the brain, and, in general, we're starting to think differently that what exists in man doesn't exist inside of him at all, but it's outside of man. And man is like a modem that receives different influences and responses, as if from above, from some kind of a cloud like today we have in the world of internet, some kind of cloud of information. And that's it. Now, besides this cloud of information, we also see a person's psychological behavior, that it is multifaceted.